50 years after a couple calls off their engagement, she finds a newspaper clipping that changes everything. Fast forward to today, 50 years later, and something miraculous has brought them back together. This time, things would be much different. The newspaper clippings made it so. Lovebirds, from the very beginning, these two found love at first sight. They became engaged while they were still in college and only saw a bright future ahead. Unfortunately, time was not on their side and tragedy struck. Due to unforeseen circumstances, the two lovers were forced to call off their engagement. The two met while attending Occidental College in Los Angeles, California. They met and fell in love immediately. It was a true love story. Boy meets girl, girl meets boy, and they end up in a castle somewhere living happily ever after. At least that's what's supposed to happen. They fell in love with each other at first sight. They got engaged a few months later. Janice Rude and Prentice Wilson pictured their lives together. That was all that mattered to them. Unfortunately, not everyone felt the same about their relationship. While the two were a beautiful couple, they were still in college. They were still earning their degrees. To some people, now just wasn't the time to get married. The way we date now is very different than it was 50 years ago. There's so much technology at our disposal. The awkwardness of talking to someone you like face to face is dulled by texting before even meeting. Something else that was different 50 years ago is the influence parents had on relationships. There was a deciding vote parents had on their children's significant other that just doesn't exist in the same way today. Sometimes, parental input isn't always good for the relationship. Just ask Janice Rude and Prentice Wilson. Janice Rude was a sophomore when she and Wilson met. She was going to Occidental College to earn a degree in biology. It was something she was determined to do. Her father instilled a belief in her that in order to achieve great things in this world, you have to work hard. That's what Rude was doing. She was working hard to earn a degree in order to be successful in life. There was no way of her knowing that her ambitions would be her undoing. She came from a humble life in Reno, Nevada. She might not have had all of the funds she needed to pay for college, but that's what work study was for. Prentice Wilson was merely a freshman when he met Janice Rude. He was still getting his feet wet in the college life. Earning a degree in law, Wilson had a plan of his life in college mapped out. Nowhere in there did he prepare to fall in love with a young woman who worked in the cafeteria. Wilson was from less humble beginnings. His family resided in Santa Maria, California, and had high expectations of their son. It was only natural that he joined a fraternity, Kappa Sigma, at Occidental College and eventually became president of it. During his time as president of Kappa Sigma, Prentice Wilson made waves at the Occidental College campus. One wave in particular was when a black student, Greg Gigsby, wanted to join the National Fraternity Union and was denied solely based on the color of his skin. Unable to accept such blatant racism, Wilson fought for Kappa Sigma to quit the National Fraternity Union and become an independent chapter, which they did. Greg Gigsby was allowed into Kappa Sigma shortly after. Although the two hadn't formally met yet, Wilson had noticed Rude during her shifts before. He noticed how early she had to wake up in order to get to her shift. Soon he was waking up just as early in order to be the first one in the cafeteria. All he wanted was to see Rude. Rude only worked in the cafeteria because she needed to make ends meet to pay her tuition. While her father paid for part of her tuition, there was still another part of her tuition that needed to be paid for. To pay for the rest, she picked up shifts at the cafeteria. When Prentice Wilson started to be the first person in the cafeteria for days at a time, Janice Rude began to take notice. She didn't mind a bit. The two couldn't keep their eyes off of each other. This is what you could deem as love at first sight. This continued for weeks. Neither of them spoke more than a few words to each other during this time. Surprisingly, none of those words included their names. Despite their obvious attraction to one another, neither of them could ask each other's names. Little did they know, that their encounters were incredibly memorable for both of them. It got to the point where if Wilson didn't show up first in her line one morning, Rude would worry that something awful had happened to him. That's how routine their encounter had become. The two looked forward to it every morning. Three and a half weeks after their first meeting, Wilson finally learned her name, Janice Rude. It was a name that he would surely never forget. And when she finally learned his name, it was one she had already heard in the news, Wilson's spout with racism and fraternities really had made a wave in the college community. Thanksgiving rolled around on the Occidental College campus and Rude was excited. 
the college held a Thanksgiving dinner before the students were given time to go home and celebrate with their families. It was meant to be an opportunity for students to get to know each other. Although she still worked the dinner, she was excited to see her favorite person in her line for this special dinner. Unfortunately, this time was different. Wilson never showed up for dinner. Worried, Rude did her best to figure out what could be wrong with her cafeteria crush. Rude found one of his friends and found out that he had traveled home early to celebrate Thanksgiving with his family. Without a thought, she mapped out the three-hour drive to Santa Maria and decided to visit him at his home. She wanted to see him and no amount of distance or fear was going to stop her. It's a good thing, too, because Wilson was delighted to see her standing on his front porch. Of course, he was shocked that she had driven this far to see him, but he was delighted nonetheless. It seemed they were both missing their incidental meetups in the cafeteria. Wilson's family welcomed Rude in with open arms, even inviting her to stay for Thanksgiving dinner. That Thanksgiving dinner was a turning point in their relationship. They were no longer cafeteria crushes who shared small talk in the cafeteria line every morning. No, everything about the nature of their interactions changed the moment they reunited on campus after Thanksgiving. An actual relationship was finally budding. The two were inseparable. Everyone around them could feel how much they enjoyed each other's company. It was obvious. They were meant to be together. Wilson knew it too. He proposed to Rude after only a few short months of knowing her. They both couldn't have been happier, but this happiness would only last a short time. Word spread fast and their engagement was announced in the local newspaper. Everyone was excited for them, except for Janice Rude's father. He didn't like the idea of his daughter marrying so young and while she was still earning her degree. Because he disapproved, he gave her an ultimatum, receive his financial support to carry out her degree or get married to Wilson. Rude's father put her between a rock and a hard place. She loved both so much, she had to choose between finishing her education and reaping the reward of all her hard work, or marrying the love of her life and spending the rest of her life with Wilson. Even with the help of Rude's mother, the financial burden of her education was still heavy. In the end, she chose to break off the engagement to Wilson. After the engagement was called off, the two started drifting apart in the world. Janice Rude went on to finish her degree in biology and ended up running the family's diving board business. The business was so successful she earned herself a Hall of Fame award. Prentice Wilson completed his law degree and became a very successful tax attorney. They both eventually married different people and lived very different lives. Though their paths rarely ever crossed, they remained cordial with each other when they did happen to bump into one another. Their engagement seemed like a dream and a lifetime ago. 47 years passed and both of them were divorced around the same time. They suffered the same tragedy of their mother's deaths around the same time. They had so much in common nearly 50 years later. It was as if the universe was calling them back to each other. Little to their knowledge, both of their mothers kept their own copy of that newspaper clipping of their engagement. Wilson's mother went so far as to laminate it and keep it in her wallet. Their mothers knew the entire time that they were meant to be together, and now they knew it too. After finding the newspaper clipping individually while going through their mother's belongings, they decided to reach out to one another. They had their first date in 50 years at the Cliffside Restaurant in San Francisco. Rude and Wilson owed it to themselves to determine whether the spark was still there. The spark never left. They felt it the moment they saw each other again, even after all this time. From there, they picked up right where they left off. The couple dated for six months before becoming engaged for the second time. This time, their engagement stuck. They were married on August 19, 2012, at the very place they fell in love, Occidental College. They celebrated their love surrounded by old classmates and family. The perfect ending to their love story, 17,500 days later.